Hey guys, so we just picked up this uh, Flex Heal 3000 from Home Depot today. It was $184 on there. You can get a little bit cheaper on Amazon, which I'll go over that here in a little bit. But we picked this up to start painting our house, our house before we try and put it on the market. And we need to get this done quick. So uh, instead of using the roller, we picked up this system. Overall, this is not that well rated. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. Today on DIY with Chris. Hey everyone, so I wanna first off start this by saying that this product is greatly under reviewed um, or, or devalued in the reviews that it's been given. I'd say that if you're the type of the person that is probably watching this video trying to learn about the product and figure out what it's about before buying it, that you're very likely to be a person who's probably going to respect products a little bit more and value them a little bit more than somebody just expecting to walk straight into a store, buy a paint gun, go home and use it, especially if they've never done one before and then expect these amazing results with very little effort research um, or patience and so just keep that in mind if you don't have patience if you don't want to do the research then this is not the tool for you and you're probably not going to like it very well and there are going to be some problems that you're going to experience so i'm going to go over the reviews on this first and then we're going to go over what is in there and uh, some different tips and tricks to make it perform a little bit better based off of some of the research that we've done so this is an indoor and outdoor paint sprayer by Wagner. It's the Flex Seal 3000, as you can see there. Uh, priced at $184, that's regular MSRP at Home Depot. Amazon has one that's on there for $154.33, so you can save a little bit on there. It is not Prime eligible from what I've known, and uh, it only has 17 reviews uh, as well. I can't find one that has any more than that. Uh, the description that you guys can see right there is mainly talking about how it has two different nozzles that can make your painting projects go so much faster. And then the bullet points down there, great for applying superior finish. The eye spray nozzle is ideal for spraying larger jobs and detail finish nozzle with those two different uh, nozzles that they provide you. The turbine delivers the power to spray unthinned interior and exterior paints and stains. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. 10 speed settings, pattern adjustment is available and goes over uh, the different coverages and how, quick it, how quickly it can be done there. It includes a sturdy carrying case, which I found to be very helpful and useful there. Um, a couple other bullet points that I put in there that I think are important to know is the one and a half quart capacity that it has. Uh, the overall, the gun is four pounds itself. We'll give you another weight later that has the case and everything included. It can process up to eight gallons per hour of latex and oil-based paints. It is 120 volts, 60 hertz, and five amps. The length is 15.9, width 6.7, and height 13.9. The weight is 9.5 pounds, everything included, and the color is yellow and black. The reviews for this are a 3.7 star rating on Amazon from 17 reviews. You can see the link there. And then from Home Depot, it's actually from 1,127 reviews, so nearly 1,200 there. And it's shown a 3.8 star uh, rating. So most of these, there's, there's actually a fair amount of one star reviews on here, but even in that case, and even though it's a 3.8 star rating, it still has an 80% customer recommendation. Most of those one star reviews are talking about uh, when you tip it up on an angle, it will spill out, the, it starts sputtering, it starts clogging, uh, and then a few other issues that way. Every single one of their one-star reviews that are on the Home Depot website, Wagner has personally replied to, and they generally drop their phone number in there to talk about the, about the warranty options and how they can help. In addition to that, when people leave descriptive enough complaints on their reviews, then they try and give them good feedback to help improve the performance. Most of those feedback options are saying, did you thin your paint? So even though the gun actually says that you do not have to thin paint, 
most of what is happening in the complaints is clogging and saturation. So in most of the replies from Wagner, they're asking if they had thinned paint. And then they're also asking, what did you thin your paint with? And they recommend water for all those. So I would recommend that before you ever use this gun, look into proper mixing ratios for water to paint, depending on what type of paint you're using. And that should maximize your performance. If you have any other questions, you can see the number there. Please call them and they should be able to give you some really good tips and tricks before you ever use your gun. It would be a waste to buy something like this for $184 and use it only for a little bit and then have poor performance because uh, you didn't know as much about it as you should have. The actual warranty for this is a one year limited warranty and uh, so they have pretty good feedback so far. I don't know how the actual answering service uh, is working right now. I only saw one review that talked about calling Wagner for uh, some support after something went wrong with their gun and nobody ever called them back so they returned it to the store but i would give them a try i haven't had to deal with that yet we're going to go ahead and get it rolling into this paint process and we'll let you know how we feel or if we had any problems with it we are going to be thinning our paint with water to a uh, half cup to one gallon ratio is what we would looked up for the type of paint that we're using and here's you some clips Most of the painting was done by my wife, so I'm gonna let her talk about her experiences with it. I did paint with it a little bit, so I have some of my opinions, but I'll let her start off first, and then we'll go over the, the different components that you will need to clean vigorously after every use. Right, so like Chris said, this is not something that you're going to be able to walk into the store, come home, and use it like a pro. It took probably a good hour or so of troubleshooting, um, getting our paint to the right consistency uh, because we did our research and we took the time and effort and we thinned our paint um, to the appropriate amount and that will vary by the paint brand that you use. Uh, one thing that we learned fairly quick was the included um, bag. So there is like a liner that came with this that you can put in this larger tub so that theoretically you wouldn't have paint all over the tub but you could just pull the bag out toss it and your tub would be clean uh, we found that that bag greatly impacted the effectiveness of the paint gun because the inner workings of this is this tilted hose and we found that the bag would get suctioned up to the end here and it would not allow for the full um, flow of the paint. So, and we started off with the bag the very first go around. So that was a part of why we had kind of that first hour uh, messing around, troubleshooting. Uh, we'll have a couple of clips of us doing the test paper that they sent with, you, uh, sent with this. You tape it up to the wall and it shows you kind of how to practice some patterns and so we did all of that to get really comfortable and then really once you kind of get the feel for it it is super easy to use uh, this is going to be a product that you need to put paint in this when you are ready to paint not when you're ready to kind of start messing around with it you don't fill it with paint and then start taping and then do your prep work because the longer paint sits in this, it's gonna clog up, it's gonna get spitty, and it's not gonna work for you. So you need to take the time to do all of your prep work first. I know it's daunting, but it really does make a huge difference uh, because once you put paint in this, you really wanna paint until you're done, until the paint is out, and then clean it right away, or you're gonna get paint hardening into all of the little tubes and cracks of this paint gun and it will, you'll kind of be able to tell when you need to clean it 
because the paint will start to build up on this outer nozzle. Um, but if you pay attention to the tool you're using, you'll be able to kind of feel and see how you need to use it and how it's working. Um, I will say that, again, prep work, prep work, prep work for this. Um, it goes everywhere. It has a very strong spray and we were using it all the way up to 12 and on the highest setting because we had just big open walls to paint and it it goes and it gets on things and it's really worth taking the time to put down your drop mats paint uh, tape everything off so again if you're looking to just grab this and paint a room in your house without doing any prep work you're not gonna like it it's gonna make a way bigger mess um, then it's worth dealing with. But if you're going to take the time to use this correctly, it's a really great tool. Um, so as far as its spray capacity and how much power it has, I've watched some other uh, reviews of different tools or different guns that Wagner has, like one that has the power pack that's at the base and then it just has the bucket that you can pour into it. And those ones seem to actually spray a lot more, uh, have a lot, spray much faster and, and more. And so that would kind of be cool. I'd almost like one of those at this point. I really wanted to get one that was uh, bottom fed up, but doing more research on it, that is actually one of the more difficult, uh, difficult paint guns to maintain. So uh, having one like that where you just have the bucket and the power unit, you pour in your entire paint can into it and then just start spraying from there. A little bit miss, a little bit less maintenance that you're gonna have to do. And it, as it's just pulling through the hose, you get a little bit better spray pattern and things like that. So that is something to keep in mind on that. Well, uh, and, and this is not a one coat and done spray gun. Uh, this will take layers, coats, uh, even with us doing white paint on top of white paint, um, it was a different finish and it took several coats to get the even uh, consistency that we wanted. A part of that will also come down to, of course, the color you're using and the quality of paint that you have. We did opt for a little bit cheaper paint because we're painting our house to sell it. Uh, so that will vary. But I would imagine that even with a really good quality paint, since you do need to water it down, it's not gonna be a one coat and done paint gun. So you probably need to count on multiple coats. Something else to keep in mind as well is uh, I did see some people complain and after using it, and I, I, I only used it a little bit, so, uh, but it was already annoying to me, is when you have this completely filled up and then you have this large, motorized piece back here so now you have the weight of all of that paint in there and then you have the weight of the motor of, of the actual paint gun and so trying to to spray up here you know and keep your your hand and arms elevated for a prolonged period of time and, and go back and forth or up or down can really wear out your your arms and make you very tired very quickly and may make it hard to sustain long term so i definitely do like this we're, we're definitely going to keep it we're not going to get rid of it um but probably looking back at this point i would rather go for the one where you just pour it into the bucket the other annoying part too is, which i would love the the bucket piece for is trying to fill this oh it was so messy we were filling from a five gallon paint bucket uh it might be easier if you were just going gallon by gallon and you had the little lip thing that you can clip onto mm -hmm. it but we had to scoop paint into this and it was a huge mess. I, mm -hmm. There was probably a better way, but that's what we came up with. Mm -hmm. But that, that's very annoying. So that would be a, a huge, uh, I would really like to just be able to pour an entire can into that base unit of, of Wagner's other model. Um, there, we didn't use the, the fine um, sprayer at all. We were just using the paint. So I can't talk about this one at all but um very good i i am very satisfied with the gun multiple passes it does have to do for it but uh, and then the maintenance there on but if you actually care about the stuff that you're buying um and don't just throw things away then 
and, and you're doing your research, I, I think that you're probably going to be the type of person that is going to be able to take care of this product and have patience with it um, in order to make sure that it is not uh, being damaged or lost. So you will see that there is some white on the side vent right here and the instructions do say to replace it every so often when it does get all clogged up. So to remove this side piece is just this little tab right here. Uh, and then you can take that off. It does come with the replacement pads. So just checking the, the pads. If you look at the back side here, it is still completely back. So uh, we haven't replaced it yet because it hasn't went very far through. It has went just a little bit, a uh, little ways through, but. Um, well, and I think a lot of that has to do with, we painted fairly well ventilated. Uh, we kept windows open and fans going. So we didn't have just kind of a, a cloud of paint around us that kept us healthy and kept the machine a little cleaner. So the overspray that some people talk about, uh, Doing the prep work, the, the drop mats and whatnot, we did put um, plastic sheets down all, all over the place. We were hanging it and everything, but uh, one of the spray sessions that we did uh, in a room, and the paint was actually thick enough in the air that it was going outside of the door of the room. We didn't close the door, so it went outside the door of the room and into the hallway uh, a little bit and being that we have the the vinyl floors in here the the wood looking vinyl floors it was pretty easy to tell that it had kind of seeped out so just make sure that you have it all prepped off and taped off uh, to begin with so as far as replacement goes it does have those uh, two additional pads because there is one on each side of the gun there now when you're doing the maintenance this little brush here is going to be your best friend uh, it is very malleable uh, so you can get it all over the place and this seems kind of uh, wimpy I would say but it actually has worked really well and the, the bristles have held their shape very well I thought that more of them would be bent by now and with the for, cleaning we've done for other mamas watching this it's a it's a bottle cleaner it's the little part of a bottle cleaner so if you do lose this you can always go and buy the really cheap pack from Walmart um, this is a little stiffer than the average bottle cleaner, but it's essentially the same thing. So that is wire. Um, so just yeah. scrape it off really well. We have this all the way cleaned out, so just make sure you clean that out on um, between every use. So this, the problem that we had with the liner is that 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 nozzle goes pretty much all the way down. It sits just barely. It hovers just barely above the bottom, so that you can spray as much as you can. And that's where it just sucked the liner right up and when we first started using it we're like wow this is a horrible gun it's not doing very well at all yeah. and we were frustrated but then we figured out that it had just sucked up the liner and so we took out the liner and it was working very well after that well and again to note the liner came with this kit it wasn't anything separate that we purchased it wasn't anything we put in there that we shouldn't have it, it came with so for other cleaning, you just pull this piece straight out. Make sure that these holes up here going to the, uh, that's, his, that's the air. So as, as it's releasing air, that's where it sucks it in to replace it and put it back into the bottle so it has that vacuum system. So you want to make sure that those holes there are always clean and open. Otherwise, you're going to lose your suction availability and then it's not going to be spraying very well. So clean out all of that, make sure you clean through the tube, wash that out. The next piece is this front yellow piece. So you can just lift the tabs on either side. You'll see a lot of paint accumulation. That's what you're gonna have to watch for while you're um, spraying because it'll start, all that paint will accumulate all through there and get start getting kind of thick. Once it starts drying and getting thick over here, it's going to mess with your spray pattern and it's going to make it much more difficult. Yep. And also make sure that your nozzle here where the paint comes out is very clean. Uh, while we were cleaning it, you can depress the handle and kind of maneuver it a little bit to get all the little bits and pieces of paint out. So next portion for cleaning is just untwist that piece there. And then you're going to come uh, to the reverse side, to the side that's actually spraying out of, 
and just push it through and that's how you're going to get even finer cleaning. So get the brush all the way through there, all of the components, make sure that that piece is clean and then you can go um, this little piece, this piece is the, is the piece that the paint is going to hit through to, to direct it through the nozzle. So make sure that you also have that all cleaned off as well. Um, we also scrubbed as much as we could around the outside. I'm not too worried about the exterior look of it. I don't want big chunks of paint on there, but there's still plenty of paint uh, flex on there. But that's not really going to affect it too much. Something that some people did talk about was just this trigger popping out and to try and get it back in and they were experiencing troubles with that I guess and then messing up their spray pattern and whatnot. I, I did have it pop out once or twice on me but to put it back in really didn't affect me using it or spraying it at all so um, not sure what their complaints about that were uh, if they're just being a little bit too aggressive popping it back in or whatnot. Well, one thing I noticed with the trigger is that every once in a while when you're hooking it to the lower of the gun, um, so you're doing it in kind of a twisting pattern. And sometimes when you go to twist it, this will get pushed in a way that it's not supposed to and it will catch. And if you aren't paying attention to that, then it can kind of break these mechanisms and be really easy to snap that off. So I think that was one part that they had talked about on a review that we watched is just making sure that when you attach that, that your trigger pieces are where they need to be. Not much to clean at the base there. You do need to make sure that no paint gets up into the motor. Otherwise, that is going to become defective fairly quick unless you want to go in there and really clean it out. So that is something to carefully watch and make sure that no paint is backfiring into there. So once you've cleaned all those individual pieces, it's just a reverse to put it back on, clip that piece in there, tighten this back on, make sure it doesn't cross thread. And then that can change either vertical, horizontal there, and then just figure out which way it is there and match your spray nozzle to it. And then that's how you can turn it for your pattern. So that's all I have for it. That's all uh, my experience was. Pretty easy to clean back through here. I really love having the case for it. Um, oh, and then this just feeds right back up in there. So um, just feed that, push it down all the way around so it has very good suction. And that is what's gonna help keep any paint from getting up into your air relief chamber. Other than that, I really hope that this review was helpful to you um, and that you can decide whether you want to invest the time, especially, and the money onto this gun. Um, again, if this is very good for, for multiple applications, but something to do a little bit less maintenance, something that's not gonna tire out your arm quite as much and, and possibly be a little bit more convenient will be that the bucket based one, I'll try and put the model number for that down in the description as well, or a link to that. But if you don't want to be dragging around a bucket everywhere you're going, because I'm not sure how long that hose is, then something like this is definitely going to be more beneficial for you. But it worked very well for us, just lots of maintenance for it. So if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll do our best to answer those uh, as soon as we can. If any of you have experience with this gun and want to leave feedback, please do that. Whole purpose of these videos is just to help others out, save them money on products that aren't good, and to help them do projects better, saving money by not having professionals do it for you so you can gain the experience. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, it really helps us out uh, and helps us get the, the channel uh, elevated there and, and get out to more people and it helps us to bring in a little bit more money and make more videos uh, there in turn. So please help us out, we greatly appreciate it and have a great day DIY team. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself today on DIY with Chris.